Natasha was feeling pretty sick. All she wanted to do, it was like 6.30, she's like, I just want to lay down in bed. I'm like, okay, no worries. And she's like, will you lay with me? I'm like, of course I will, you know, yes, we'll lay down. I love going to bed at 6.30. She's just like, oh, I'm so cold, I'm so cold, I'm so cold. And I'm like, you know, like, okay, okay. She says, please don't leave me. Like, meaning like, go downstairs. And I'm like, I'd never leave you. I'll be right back. The thing you're never supposed to say in a horror movie. Yeah, that's right. Because you won't be back, you'll be dead. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about getting into galleries. Now this video is really designed for those of you uh, that are not necessarily just starting out in your art. You might have been an artist for many years, but you're interested now in selling your art. A gallery is a very traditional place that you can do that. And you might feel very ready as an artist um, because you have made a lot of artwork, but are you ready to present yourself to a gallery? That's that's one of the questions that we're gonna kind of address today. Do you have your art organized? Is it in a fashion that you can show it chronologically, based on style? Is it relevant to you now? You know, if you're showing artwork that you did in college, but recently you're doing uh, a completely different uh, type of art, um, what the gallery is gonna want is the most recent stuff that reflects you. Do you know what makes your artwork special or different? Uh, a gallery would wanna know that. You know, if they don't see it uh, in, in the art, but they want to also see it in you that you believe in yourself, it's important to have that confidence. We always talk about the C word uh, on uh, artist problems because it's uh, one of the biggest artist problems is just confidence. We should just do artist problems, confidence. Forget artist problems. I think it's just a life problem, confidence. Are you in this for the long haul or do you just want to sell a couple pieces of art? Galleries want people that are in it for the long haul. Do you know what this gallery sells their artwork at and what you think your artwork is worth. And is there a big discrepancy between that? Now, there are other things involved. Like, for example, do you live in the mountains but you like to paint beachscapes? I would suggest finding galleries closer to the beach rather than trying to sell locally or painting what you have locally. Think about the area, the market, what people want, uh, what people are looking for. If I'm on vacation uh, at, let's say, Myrtle Beach or something, and you know, I see a nice painting of, of where I am. I'm like, oh, this will remind me of my vacation. I might consider buying it. But if I'm at Myrtle Beach and I see a painting of New York City, I may or may not even take a second look at it. And along with that statement of confidence, do you have the confidence to be rejected? Do you have the confidence to be rejected many times? Do you have the confidence to understand that a rejection is not necessarily a reflection of your artwork but just the simple needs of the gallery because the gallery knows the answers to a lot of those questions already. They know what sells for them. Do you have the confidence to uh, not sell your pieces? You know, uh, a lot of times a, a gallery first opening, um, your art won't sell. Uh, and most gallery owners know that, but you know that if you let that defeat you, that is going to pretty much put an end to that. Uh, but you can't let that defeat you. Oh, wait, I don't have to say anything else after. You can't let that defeat you. When you're working with a gallery, this is what we call a business relationship. But along with that, even though it's a business relationship, I think that we should actually reverse it. It should be a relationship business because the relationship needs to come before the business. And when it comes to trying to get attention from a gallery, it, it's just like dating. You have to court them. You want them to kind of court you a little bit. You know, you don't want to come off too strongly. You don't want to come across too pushy. And then after you've established yourself with a gallery, once you're in a relationship, maintaining that relationship by not, um, I don't know, doing all the things that I do to my wife. Not being difficult, not being a, a problem, but, but just working with them and being part of their team and they're part of your team because they are a tool that will help you sell your art. The first thing that you need to do when it comes to working with galleries, but I just think just in life, is you need to check your ego at the door, okay? Ego, arrogance, there is a place for it in terms of like giving yourself a boost, but really what the way I learned it was this. Imagine like you've got like a, a full gas tank and an empty gas tank. Okay. On the empty gas tank side, you have um, insecurity. 
you know, like, oh, I don't know basically how I act. I don't, is this gonna be good? Is anybody gonna care? On the other end of that full tank, you have arrogance, where it's like, you know, I've got this. In the center of those is your confidence. It has to do with not being aggressive, but assertive, believing in yourself, but still understanding that you have things to learn. Along those lines, even though we have two ends of the spectrum, an empty tank of insecurity and a full tank of uh, arrogance, in reality, they're the same thing presented in two different ways. Certain people, whether they realize it or not, when they have these arrogant statements, are trying to make themselves feel better without realizing what they're saying. And then there's people like me that just say what the, you know, they wear their heart on their sleeve and they just say what's on their mind and let their uh, insecurities flow. Okay, I don't know if that's a good point, but we'll, we'll put it in there anyway. With your ego checked at the door, this is what I want you to expect when working with a gallery. I want you to expect they are going to want your most recent stuff uh, that's most relevant to you. They're gonna wanna work with you on setting what price it sells for. They will be the ones to set the commission rate, which is generally between 40 to 50%, and understand that they are putting uh, a lot into you because everything in a, in a retail environment, and a gallery is basically a retail environment, has to pay its rent. When I was working at Jerry's retail division, the president of uh, our retail division always used to tell me, we sell many different things at Jerry's, but what we don't sell is pegboard, meaning empty shelf space. Remember that the gallery wants to sell your artwork. They want to sell it. They are going to pick and choose which pieces they want to show uh, because this is what they feel will work best for you. Now, on the other side of that, as an artist, this gallery is representing you, right? So that they're also a reflection of you. So one of the things that I like to tell people to do is before even worrying about getting into a gallery, a specific gallery, go to that gallery as a customer. How do they treat you? You know, I would even dress down, like make it look like you don't have a dime. And, and, and just, you know, look around. Do they greet you pleasantly? Do they dismiss you? I mean, if this gallery comes across as that arrogant, you know, side of things, maybe that's not how you want to be represented. Uh, so it's important that you kind of feel them out. And you're, you're not spying, you're just basically trying to understand them and, you know, looking at paintings. You want a pretty woman in the gallery? You want a pretty woman in the gallery, that's right. That's right. What? Along with all this, let me just give you one little tip, something that is just a good rule of thumb in life. Whenever you make an arrangement with a gallery, anything that you guys agree upon, G-I-I-T. No, G-I-I-W. T. Get it in writing, okay? You want documentation. If they're gonna take 50% and you understand that, you want them to have that in a contract. You, a contract, although it's intimidating to sign one, is to protect both parties. They will most likely not want you to sell your artwork in a certain radius because that's their business pull. Uh, and you, know, you should expect that too. Um, but whatever the understanding is, have it in writing so that you have something to look at and reference if you feel you're being taken advantage of. And they'll have something in case they feel like you might have misunderstood something. So it, it, it's mutually beneficial, these contracts. And you know, if you're very worried about it, you can always have a lawyer look over it. But uh, for the most part, these contracts are fairly standard. So you've found a gallery. You think that it will work for you. you know, you went in, you did your little tour, they treated you nicely, you think they'll represent you well, you think that your artwork will sell well there, um, it is in the same price point that yours artwork is at, it's a similar, um, it fits with the theme. So now the question is how to approach them. We, we, we don't want to come across too strong, but we want to let them know we're interested. There's the saying the squeaky oil gets the squeaky, there's a saying, the <laughs> there's a see, uh, word vomit. The squeaky wheel gets the oil. But again, think about that in the beginning of a relationship. You don't want to squeak too much, uh, or people might find you a little annoying. Just put it at that. So this is how you get started. Go to their website. Nine times out of 10, on their website, there is going to be a, a link or a button or a form that says submissions uh, for artists looking to be represented by the gallery. Go on there and follow the rules. They will tell you what they want, how they want it. Once you send it and you haven't heard back, I would say that within a week or two, it would be okay to just call, and this is how I would phrase it because I'm 
you know, I, I dance around delicate subjects. I would call and say, hi, you know, my name's Michael. Um, I s recently submitted something to your website. I just wanted to make sure you received it, that's all. You know, keep it short, keep it sweet. Don't be like, what did you think? You know, don't be like, you know, do you think I'm worth it? Or don't be like, you know, you'll be an idiot not to sell me. You know, just, just make sure that uh, they received it. And if you don't hear back again, I think we can take the hint. But don't let that kill you. Don't let that ruin your confidence. It's not a rejection of you as an artist. The rejection is, I don't think I can sell this for you. And they're actually doing you a favor. If they don't, if they don't believe that they can sell it because of whatever it is, the market, the price point, you're just gonna be wasting your time trying to force this relationship, okay? And that's not good. A forceful relationship is uh, never one that lasts. Now, once you have that relationship established, let's say that they've, they've contacted you, you've, you've come to your agreements, um, they, they've told you what uh, their commission rate is, they've told you what they want to sell and how they're going to sell it, and you disagree, can reconsider, reconsider everything. If you believe that you know how to better present and sell your artwork, open your own gallery. Like, and I'm not just saying that to be like, you know, do it your damn self. You know, I'm just like, I'm just saying, if you honestly feel that way, you should open your own gallery. Because the reality is, is that these galleries know it works for them. And it's not going to be a relationship that lasts if you're going in there and you're saying, well, uh, you know, I, I don't want you to show these pieces. I'd rather you show these pieces. It, it's not going to work. If you feel you know better, do it yourself. And with the invention of, uh, with the recent invention of things like the internet, um, it, it is easier. You don't have to formally open a gallery, but I mean, there, there are other ways to get yourselves out there and yourself out there and noticed. All right. Step one, step two, step three. We've made a relationship. They've agreed to represent you. What should I do next? Should I call constantly and say, hey, how are things going? Hey, what's selling? What I would say is you don't want to be a nudnik, okay? Nudnik is a term that Will knows because he's worked with me for years now. Don't call an email. I mean, these, these people are in business. If, if you need to reach them, you should feel confident if there is a need. You don't want to call and say, I, I want to speak to the owner with miscellaneous requests. Uh, it's a lot less intrusive. If you do shoot an email, again, keep in mind that tone, like, hey, if you have a second, I would love to catch up with you. Um, but again, as that relationship progresses, and if one person seems more needier than the other, uh, it makes the other party feel a little, what's the word I'm looking for? A little smothered. Smothered is the right word? So you don't want to be smothered, and you don't want to smother somebody else uh, unless it's with ketchup or at the Waffle House. Mm -hmm. I want you smothered, I want you covered. So your relationship with this gallery might start with your very first opening, where they're gonna have an opening night, they're open late, and it's just to highlight and feature you, your art. Most likely, things are not gonna sell. And how are you going to let that affect you, if you're going to let that affect you? Just because you're there and maybe nothing sells, doesn't mean it won't. Art is not necessarily always an impulse buy, and sometimes people come back after the fact, and you know, discuss it with their significant other, or they've decided, you know what, this is something that I want to, to, to have. So don't let that first opening really get you down. And if for some reason everything sells, don't get cocky. Remember, we're not getting arrogant here, okay? Don't get cocky. The reason that galleries are constantly looking for seasoned, not only seasoned artists, but seasoned people in the business of art is because they understand already what the gallery is looking for. They're looking for consistency in terms of, you know, are you gonna keep producing art or once this sells out, are you done? They wanna make sure that you're in it for the long haul because they're in it for the long haul. If you're just, you know, trying to trying this on a whim, uh, it, it's most likely not something that they're interested in where they know a seasoned art uh, seller, artist, uh, understands that already and has invested their time and will continue to invest their time in creating art and working with the gallery and uh, having a, a good professional relationship. They also know galleries are constantly getting requests by other artists. Uh, you know, they, they, they understand a lot of these things that we're discussing for somebody just approaching a gallery. 
Uh, and if you make it clear in the beginning that you understand these things, they might feel a little less apprehensive about starting that relationship with you. Don't say things like, you know, I, I realize that my first showing won't sell. You want to have that confidence to say, listen, this is why I think my artwork will sell. This is what makes me unique. And that's not arrogance. I think that that's important. You need to have uh, a certain balance of like, you know, listen, I believe in myself and this is why. And I don't think anybody should think that that's cocky unless you say it in a really cocky way. It is so important that you do your homework on a gallery. You understand what they sell, what they're looking for, what they, the price point, of all the things we talked about. If you call a gallery without doing your homework, you're basically just asking them, hey, look at my art. You know, and, and that's not how a relationship starts. It, that, that, that would be like, oh, you know what that would be like? Hey, look at my... I think that's how dating apps work. That's how dating apps work, yeah, swipe right. You're basically just asking them to, to, to judge you based on looks alone, the looks of your artwork, without showing them that you have actual interest in them and that you understand um, what they might be looking for and why you think you might be a good fit. Uh, when you just, you know, cold call, it, it doesn't come across good. You don't want to approach a gallery, ask them to look at your artwork, and not have anything else to discuss. Because at the end of the day, what you're saying is, what can you, the gallery, do for me? And that's not a mutually beneficial relationship. So keep that in mind, in the beginning especially. Um, understanding that gallery, make sure that you know, that, you, that, that they know in basically your knowledge, that um, you've got taken the time to learn their business uh, as best you can and why you think that you would be a good fit. Now, <clears throat> because I'm me and I have many friends in the art world, uh, I actually spoke to my friend Nicole White Kennedy. Nicole is a local artist here in Raleigh, North Carolina and for many years owned a gallery. I, I wanted to know what's the number one thing, no, no. What is the number one thing that you just don't do? And she said, the number one thing that pisses her off is when people just come into the gallery with a big old portfolio and like we were saying, look at my artwork. There, there is a method to submitting and that although persistence is good, that is an extremely aggressive, pushy move that would most likely turn off somebody you're trying to court. Okay, again, go back to that relationship. You're, you're, meeting, you're meeting somebody, you like them, you hope that they like you, you know, and you, know, you go out on a first date, maybe you get a little kiss, you know, who knows what happens. But as the relationship develops and those kisses mean less, um, you, know, <laughs> you still need to show that you are invested in it, you know, and not cheating, no cheating. She also told me, uh, and this is something that, you know, we've already addressed, she prefers to be emailed versus called simply for the fact that there's a written record, and that will do both of you justice. It is important, as much as I'm telling you not to, as, as you have this established relationship, uh, it is important to not be a stranger to that relationship. So, you know, especially when the gallery reaches out to you, like let's say, you know, you get a phone call or an email, um, respond to those, you know. Uh, even if you've been working with them for 20 years, it's important that they understand that you're still around, that you're keeping in touch, uh, and, and that you send back those little love letters, you know, going back to that relationship thing. So yeah, keep in touch uh, so that you keep that relationship going. Nicole also told me that she feels that the artists that are most successful in her gallery are artists that are consistent in their style that they find something that if, if it sells for one person, it's more it's likely to sell for, for, for many people. There's just something about it, and that style might define you. Now, as an actor, you know, one of the things that a lot of actors feel is like, well, I don't want to be stereotyped as, you know, like, you know, a whiny Jewish guy, which I basically just live my life that way. You don't want to be stereotyped as an actor because then you're, you're afraid that you'll only be cast for roles that way. Being known for your artwork is a, is a different scenario. You know, if you can make an impact, and you might, look, all you want to do is paint puppies, but for whatever reason, uh, people absolutely love your abstract artwork. It's going to pay the bills. Do it. And if you, and if you vary from your style or, or are inconsistent, uh, it can be damaging. I mean, if you think of, uh, if, if I was to say to you, um, Vincent Van Gogh, there are any number of paintings that might come to mind. And you might notice that they all kind of sim have a similar theme. Uh, Claude Monet, um, 
any of the Renaissance painters, you know, da Vinci, uh, Michelangelo, um, Raphael, uh, you know, they all have this distinctive style um, and, and they stuck with it. And that kind of has transcended time. Andy Warhol, um, his style was, you know, pop art, American pop art. He found ways to vary it to keep himself interested. So, you know, you might remember his, um, you know, Campbell soup cans, but he also did flowers and Marilyn Monroe, but it still fit with the theme. It fit with a, a theme that represented him. And Pablo Picasso, who, you know, was a Cubist artist, uh, who was a Cubism, is it Cub? He was, was he Cuban? No. He did Cubism. It was very well documented that he could paint in any style he wanted. He was an extremely talented, arrogant artist. And he chose Cubism. And whether or not it was because he felt that that most accurately reflected him, or he felt like that would be what he wanted to be known for or what would sell, because most artists are not famous until after they're, they're, they're dead, unfortunately, you know? Um, and that, that's just crazy, you know? I'm sure he sold a painting or two in his day, and he probably, along with that, felt confident in making those. He had his own style, it was unique to him, and uh, he stuck with it, so yeah. Nicole told me that she follows artists before representing them. She wants to get to know them. Everything goes back to the relationship. And she said in, in her experience, she's got about an 85% retention rate. And that means artists that come and go, 85% just, just come. The reason that Nicole uh, has an 85% retention rate is because she took the time to get to know those artists. Uh, and, and that means that 15% of the time, something didn't work out. Now, sometimes people move, uh, somebody has an injury, life gets in the way, but 85% retention rate was really impressive to me. Um, it, 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 it showed that she was good at her half of the relationship and that she did her homework on the artist as well as the artist did homework on her. And it's not stalking, you know, don't hire a PI. It's, it's just understanding what they're looking for and making sure that they understand you. And a big rule that I try, to, I try my best to follow, and I don't always follow this, first try to understand the other person and then try to be understood. You, you want to first understand where they're coming from and with that knowledge in hand, then you can more accurately say what you're feeling. Okay. Uh, it was actually one of the um, uh, seven habits of highly effective people. Mm -hmm. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. And it, it's true. It's a, good, it's a good thing. And I don't always do it because I'm such a whiner, but I, 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 it is something that's on my mind constantly. Is like, okay, am I understanding them correctly? <clears throat> I also talked to her about uh, you know, what, it, what are her rules about them selling in multiple galleries. And she just basically said, give me some space. Don't try to sell your artwork, you know, within a certain radius because that's my territory, more or less. Most galleries are not going to look to be the absolute exclusive seller of your artwork. It's just not reasonable. You want to have as many outlets as possible. But you want to also understand that they want to protect their business and what they sell. And if they're competing with another gallery, um, it, 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 it's not, it's not going to be a mutually beneficial relationship for them. Now, this is a number one no-no. In fact, this is the equivalent of cheating, and that is never undercut the gallery. So what do I mean by that? Let's say that you and the gallery have decided that your artwork for a 12 by 16 framed uh, would sell for around $500. Now you know that you're going to get $250 if that piece of artwork sells, less taxes and all that kind of stuff. You don't want to have on your website that people can buy direct from you pieces of artwork for, let's say, $300 because, hey, then you make an extra 50 bucks. That is a no-no. You're cheating the gallery, and you're also cheating yourself. You're devaluing yourself. When the gallery sells your artwork for $500, the, the buyer doesn't care where that money goes or came from necessarily. They're just interested in the art, and they felt it was worth the price. But if they, they then go see on your website that you're selling your artwork, same thing, similar piece that they bought for $300, even though you might have made more money selling it that way, um, they kind of feel like, hey, why did I spend 500 bucks? I mean, it, 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 it doesn't make any sense. It's okay to have your own website, but don't undercut the gallery. By undercutting 
the gallery, you are undercutting yourself and you are devaluing your art. Nicole also made the point, following up with what I was saying before, is set your expectations low uh, in the beginning. Most likely, things will not sell off the bat. People will come back as they get to know you. And that's another thing. People, just like that gallery, the gallery wants to understand you so that they can sell you. The customer wants to know you as well. So you want to have a story because a story is the hook. It's what gets you invested. And so as an artist, you know, whatever it is, whether it's something like, you know, you're a cancer survivor or maybe uh, you have come from hard knocks, maybe you came from extreme wealth, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's them feeling like they know you. And I think that that's why, you know, like people like you are watching this video, I, I want you to get to know me and I'd like to get to know you, like that's why I have like Instagram and stuff, because that it's that relationship, it's, it's forming, uh, it's forming something and, you know, you want to be informed. So having a story to tell and uh, making it your own, making sure the gallery knows that and that potential buyers know that is, uh, is, a, is a big plus. So again, thank you to my friend Nicole uh, White Kennedy. You can actually follow her uh, website at NicoleStudio.com. Check out her art. Uh, really, uh, I love her style. It's, it's just, it, it makes me feel very warm. And uh, of course, going along with everything I just said, I've had a relationship with Nicole for many years, over a decade. Because I know her, that artwork is special. It, it really is. You want a connection. And I feel that connection because I have that relationship. That artwork has significant meaning because of that. All right, well, what were your questions? We're, we're taking questions now. Uh, okay, so Will just asked me about uh, when you are selling with a gallery, are you selling giclés? Are you selling the real deal? Or are you selling shades of gray? It will depend on the gallery. So some galleries only want to sell original artwork. Um, other galleries will sell a combination. Um, some galleries exclusively sell giclés. In fact, um, the majority of the galleries that you think about that have like the the Disney stuff or like, you know, the cartoon stuff or um, the Thomas Kincaid stuff. I mean, they're all almost exclusively Gicle. Um, but you should have done your homework on that already and known ahead of time what they're looking for, okay? You don't want to call and try to sell them original artwork when that's not what they're selling. It's, it's gallery dependent. I mean, look, selling your original artwork is, is great, but you know, selling original artwork and Giclees offers different price points. And not everybody's in the market for a $2,500 piece of artwork, but they might be in the market for $250 piece of artwork if it's a Giclee or a hand-touched Giclee. When you approach that gallery, Will's question is, how many pieces do you want to have prepared? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer your question the way I, 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 I answer how long should this video be? As long as it takes to get your point across and not a second more. So when it comes to how many pieces you have, you're gonna show them one to three collections, a uh, handful of pieces in each, and if they're interested, they will ask to see more. So I would recommend having a portfolio, what I would call the express portfolio, and that's most likely the stuff that you will submit through their website. Um, versus your full portfolio, which again should be segmented to the types of artwork you're doing and uh, the relevance to your current uh, artistic style in case they come back and say, well, we really like this one. What else do you have to show? So again, you don't want to come in there with everything, have some things that you think best represent you, and then if they ask for more, have that ready as a separate presentation. If you have 100 pieces in that, and they're not going to want you to upload 100 pieces to their website, Upload, you know, four to six, whatever you got, and then if they want to see more, you can bring them in the printed portfolio. Uh, so my assumption, and that's always a bad idea is to assume, is that the majority of you are new at this and, and curious about the process. However, uh, I am curious to know if some of you that are watching are experienced with this. Maybe you're a gallery owner yourself. Please share your knowledge below. Anything you can add that can help is uh, appreciated. Um, you know, th there are threads in some of our videos that go back and forth several times where uh, people that actually have experience and authority, um, because I, I mean, personally, I'm, I'm up here talking, but I haven't been represented in a gallery. i uh, not looking to be represented in a gallery. I like to keep things private because I'm a private person. I'm not, but yeah, anyway. Um, if you have some experience and knowledge, please share that below. Uh, your own... Um, things that drive you crazy, your own things that uh, you've found to be true or not true, and, uh, and share. It's share time. All right, so just to make things nice and clean, you want to be a good partner 
in that relationship and you want to be flexible in your needs and you want to be following me on Instagram at Mike Nachiere, gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, where, um, you know, we upload uh, things that are just too crazy to put on this because <laughs> it's mine. Uh, you know, uh, outtakes, behind the scenes, random photos of stuff, things that Jamie makes for me. And uh, be sure to tag me in your artwork. I love to see what everybody's up to. Um, I follow a lot of artists that when they tag me, I get to see it. Uh, and it's great. I love to see what everybody's creating and if I'm helping inspire. So, if you've enjoyed this video, I hope you've enjoyed our other videos. We do our Mixed Media Mondays with Ophelia. Um, she's, she, she makes me look like a confident man. Uh, no, she's great. I love Ophelia. Um, and of course, Jerry's Live with Amy Gardner-Dean, uh, 5.30 p.m. EST, that's Eastern Standard Time, on Tuesdays, uh, both on our uh, YouTube channel, uh, live, and on Facebook Live. And it's good information, and Amy is so knowledgeable and um, helps me out a lot with uh, the various things that I'm working on. Uh, great resource to have, and you should take advantage of being able to communicate with her, ask her questions. Uh, I hope you subscribe. I hope you hit the bell uh, that, that, what does the bell do? Yeah, hit the bell so that you can be notified when we do live videos and my videos and any videos we post uh, will uh, be brought to your attention, right? And uh, thank you so much for being a part of our little family. Uh, I also wanna say we are gonna be taking a summer break because that's what I do. I need a break, I need a recharge, I need a refresh. Need to think of new artist problems. So, we'll be back right after these months. No. So, we'll come back uh, at the end of summer and continue our problems. Doesn't sound great, but it's true. Thank you so much for watching. Man, why did I say that? that way. Let's end the video a, sp a special way. What, what, how should we end it? Deuces. Deuces? <laughs> Deuces? No. Right now, there's a thing appearing here and a thing appearing here, and you're just waiting for it to load the next video. That's right. Let's end it like that.